We have a sample problem here. An object undergoes simple harmonic motion with a period of two seconds. The position of the object is three meters at time equals zero seconds, and its velocity is one meter per second at time equals zero seconds. Determine the motion as a function of time. So we're trying to write an equation that describes the position of this object, whatever it might be, as a function of time. So in terms of what they've given us, they've told us the period is two seconds, the position at time equals zero. So my initial position is three meters and its velocity initially is one meter per second. That means, say we had a mass on a spring and this was equilibrium. The mass is over here, three meters away. Since they give us a positive value, that means a positive position. So that would be to the right in my picture. And they've given me a positive velocity, so we can say that it is moving to the right initially as well. Okay, so in terms of equations, the generic equation we have for position, a cosine omega t plus v naught. Since they've given us a velocity, let's go ahead and write out that velocity function as well. We know the velocity is the derivative of the position function. So we end up with negative omega a sine of omega t plus v naught. All right, so we have quite a few unknowns here. Period. If you remember, omega is 2 pi f, but f is 1 over period, so we know that omega is 2 pi over t, 2 pi over the period. So we know, in this case, the period is 2, so omega is pi. So we do have that one value. And then we know these two initial conditions. So both of these happen at time equals zero. Oops, sorry. What I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and plug in what we know into these equ two equations. So for example, the position we know is three meters. I'm not gonna write out all the decimal places. I will consider that in terms of writing my answer but just for the sake of setting my problem up, I'm just gonna write the three. I don't know the amplitude, so I'm gonna leave that as A. Cosine, I know omega is pi, but the position is three at this time equals zero. And then I don't know this phase shift either. So essentially, the term with omega t cancels, or not cancels, it's zero because the time is zero. So my position function tells me that this three meters is equal to whatever the amplitude might be times the cosine of phi naught. I have two unknowns here, so this doesn't allow me to solve for anything right away, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and plug in what we know to the velocity equation as well. So we know the initial velocity at time equals zero is one meter per second. That's gonna equal negative omega a sine of omega times zero because we're talking at time equals zero. So this becomes one is equal to negative Omega is pi, I could have plugged that in over here. I don't need to plug it in yet at all if we don't want to. In fact, I'm not going to yet. And then I'm gonna have sine of phi. 
Okay, so I know omega. I do not know a. I do not know phi. A and phi naught are both in these two equations. Now I can either solve one of the equations for a and plug it in the other, or I'm actually going to take this bottom equation for velocity and divide it by the position function. When I do that, A cancels, and this leaves me with one third is equal to negative omega times sine over cosine is tangent. So that gives me tangent of phi naught. I know omega, let's go ahead and solve for tangent of phi naught will be negative one over three omega. And since we know omega is pi, I can take the inverse cosine of tangent, sorry, not cosine, inverse tangent of one, negative one over three pi. Now again, uh, our calculator needs to be in radian mode since omega is in radians per second. So inverse tangent negative one over three pi. Make sure you put parentheses in your calculator around the three pi so that the pi is in the denominator. So phi naught is negative 0 0.106 radians. Now we do need to make sure that when we're plugging in and setting up our equation that we're using the correct plus or minus phi naught. If you recall, our calculators will get a negative tangent value for either quadrant one or three so we need to be careful and make sure we're making sense of our answer, our fee. So a disc rotating counterclockwise is going to have a peg either up here or down here. And then if we were to shine light on this peg to see its shadow over on this other side, we would see the shadow behind that peg, so somewhere along that line. We need to make sure we're matching up the motion. Since we're talking about this disc rotating counterclockwise, the pegs, the top one would be rotating towards the left in general, the bottom one would be rotating to the right since that is what we're seeing because we have this positive velocity that bottom peg is the one we want so the angle we solved for is down here which we will use this negative 0 0.106 radians that does happen to match the correct conditions so we have phi naught we have omega in terms of our equation, we need A, the amplitude. We can get that easily now from either one of these equations that we wrote out for position and velocity. The position one looks easier to solve. A here would be three over cosine of phi naught. So three over cosine of We've calculated that phi naught now. So three divided by the cosine of that angle, I'm getting 3.02. The units will be meters. And that's because the three is in meters. X initial was in meters. 
So our equation, what we need to do is just plug in a omega and phi naught, and we will have our equation of motion. So the position of this object as a function of time will equal 3.02 meters times the cosine of, we found omega was pi. You can put the units of, on it. The units are also, SI units are implied, which are the radians per second. Here is our equation that describes the motion of this object as a function of time. We can now plug in any time we want, and that would allow us to calculate the position at that time.